Smoke reveals the beautiful spectra produced by white light shining through a diffraction grating. Normally this is demonstrated with the spectrum projected onto a screen, as I did in my earlier video. But the smoke spray provides something to reflect the light from into our eyes, or into the video camera, allowing us to see the beams of light along their entire length. But how does a diffraction grating, which consists of hundreds or thousands of slits in every millimetre of grating, how does it split white light up into all of its component colours or wavelengths? Well, each of these slits acts as a source of light, and all these different sources of light interfere with each other. So first of all, let's answer the question as to why we get a white beam down the middle, the zero order beam. If we alternate between red and green lasers, we can see that the zero order beam occurs in the same place for both colours. And in fact, this is true of all colours of different wavelengths of light, which add together to make the white light. In this diagram, we can see what is happening for red light. The light from all the hundreds of slits, of which I've only drawn five, have exactly the same distance to travel. So the waves arrive in phase, which means the waves are all doing the same thing at the same time, and so they constructively interfere, adding together to make a larger wave or bright light. This is also true for green light, and in fact, for all wavelengths or colours of light. And so we get all colours of light combining, and that gives us a white zero order beam. This great FET animation shows the simpler case for two sources of light, and we can see that all the colours have constructive interference down the zero order beam. Next, why do we get this region with no light between the zero and first order beams? Well, it's a small angle out from the centre. The waves from adjacent slits have a small path difference of a fraction of a wavelength, meaning that one of them has to travel a little bit further than the other one. And so we get waves of all different phases arriving, and these destructively interfere. A peak of one wave coincides with the trough of another, and they cancel each other out. Again, we can see this in the FET animation. But with just two sources of light, the dark region is much narrower than it is with the diffraction grating. Next, why do we get the higher order beams, and why do they consist of spectra? Alternating between red and green lasers and white light, we can see that the first order beams occur at a smaller angle for green light than for red light, and at even smaller angles for blue and violet light. We can also see that the angles of the first order beams of the red and green lasers match up with the angle of those colours in the first order beam from the white light. In these diagrams, we can see that the first order beams occur when the light from adjacent slits has to travel exactly one wavelength further, called a path difference of one wavelength. This means that all the waves once again arrive in phase, doing the same thing at the same time, and they constructively interfere to once again make bright light. In the diagrams, we can see that because of the wavelength of green light being shorter than for red light, the angle at which the path difference between adjacent slits is one wavelength is smaller for green light. So the first order beam for green light occurs at a smaller angle than for red light. We can also see this again in the FET animation. The first order beam is at the largest angle for red light and the smallest angle for violet light. So because the first order beams occur at different angles for the different colours, we see spectra in the first order beam when we use white light. But why do we get the higher order beams like the second order beam? Well, the second order beam occurs when the path difference between two adjacent slits is exactly two wavelengths. We can see the higher order beams clearly with the green laser, and at times with the white light and red laser, but they get dimmer because less light diffracts to these larger angles. Anyway, I hope that you now understand why a diffraction grating produces a beautiful spectrum of white light and why this happens all the way along the beams and not just on a screen at the far end. But even if you didn't fully understand what is happening, I hope that you can nevertheless enjoy the beauty of the spectra that are produced.